Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about LoRa, which stands for Low Rank Adaptation of Large Language Models. Let's get started. So let me start with the basic problem of fine tuning large language models. Fine tuning these large language models is super difficult. Uh, let me give you some estimates of the sizes of these models. Roberta base uh, is 125 million parameters. Roberta large is 355 million parameters. Tiberta XXL 1.5 billion parameters. GPT-2 medium 355 million. GPT-2 large 774 million. GPT-3 175 billion parameters. And then there are other models, of course, which are in the trillion parameter range as well today. Right? Fine tuning these models takes a lot of RAM and time. So uh, you need to actually store the full model for each task as well. So even if you could fine tune them, let's say if you have like 50 different tasks for which you need to fine tune these models for, you need to really save insanely large amounts, uh, you know, each model which is very large in size. For example, fine tuning a GPT-3 model needs 1.2 TB of VRAM, right? And that's very difficult to obtain for most uh, uh, organizations. There are several existing solutions so as to make this fine tuning uh, uh, efficient both res with respect to time as well as with respect to the RAM requirements. For example, you could fine tune only the last few layers in a transformer based model. Let's say last K layers and you could set K to one or two depending on the amount of RAM that you have. Yet another way of saving on uh, in the compute that is required to fine tune is to fine tune only biases. You train only the bias vectors. Um, well, yet another way is to do prefix embedding tuning, which basically means that uh, you uh, either prepend some special tokens to the prompt or actually append the special tokens to the prompt called as prefixing or infixing. And uh, these special tokens are the ones for which the word embeddings are trained. So just the embedding uh, layer is trained, trainable word embeddings, but then you use the remaining parameters across the transformer layers as it is without, without fine tuning them. Okay. Uh, a variation of this is called prefix layer tuning or pre-layer, where the idea is to uh, not just uh, train the word embeddings, but train other layers as well. So instead of just the learning the word embeddings for some special tokens, you actually learn the activations after every transformer layer. Okay. So of course it has more parameters to be fine-tuned, but well, still considerably less number of uh, parameters because your prefixes or these special tokens are much smaller compared to the overall input sequence length. Okay. Yet another method, uh, existing solution to make fine tuning more efficient is adapters, right? And tuning only the adapters at fine tune time. So these adapters uh, are extra layers, which are uh, which typically are uh, two fully connected layers with biases and of course activation uh, for uh, you know in in the um, um, after the first layer. Uh, and these adapter layers are inserted between the self attention module and the uh, MLP module and the subsequent residual connection. Uh, where a variation, uh, there are several variations of adapters. One of the other popular variation is that you apply adapter layer uh, only after the MLP and after a layer non, uh, but not after the self-attention uh, module. Okay. Now the existing solutions uh, uh, are, are good enough, but uh, um, you know, uh, in some senses, but they are not good enough because of some drawbacks that they have. For example, adapter layers introduce inference latency. So uh, if you put in more and more adapters, yes, there is time required to do inference uh, and uh, inference through those layers as well. Right? Um, the prefix embedding tuning and prefix layer tuning, uh, they have their own issues. For example, it's hard to directly optimize the prompt. Uh, so, you know, uh, for example, if you optimize the prompt and you try to increase the size, increase the uh, number of parameters in these prefixes, uh, you don't always get monotonous increase in your accuracy across data sets um, if you increase the size of the parameters, which is what is expected. Right? So directly optimizing these, this hyperparameter, the size of the prefix is difficult. Reserving a part of the sequence length for the prefix for adaptation also reduces the overall sequence length that is available to process the downstream task. So that basically reduces the overall input that you can actually pass to the downstream task. Right. So here comes LoRa to save the day. Right. Uh, LoRa stands for low rank adaptation. The idea is actually super simple. Uh, in general, when you want to uh, fine tune a particular weight matrix, uh, of course you fine tune the entire model, and then when you're fine tuning, a weight matrix gets updated. Right. Um, so uh, based on the gradients that are flowing uh, through the back propagation. Now in LoRa, you essentially, um, uh, you know, you keep the pre-trained weights frozen. So you freeze the pre-trained weights as it is shown in the picture. And you uh, actually, uh, while fine tuning, you only update these uh, this separate path, uh, which comprise of two weight matrices A and B. Right? 
So you freeze the pre-trained model weights and inject trainable rank decomposition matrices into each layer. So wherever your weight matrix, essentially you have uh, this uh, this orange colored uh, A and B matrices alongside. Okay. In some ways, you have you, you have reparameterized the overall update so as to basically keep W frozen, the original pre-trained weights frozen, but only update A and B. Now, this is very, very powerful, although a super simple idea, right? So GPT-3, 1.75, uh, 175 billion uh, fine tuning. If you consider that, LoRa actually reduced the number of trainable parameters by 10,000 times and the GPU memory requirements by three times. Uh, it performs, uh, accuracy wise, it performs on par or even better sometimes than fine tuning uh, in terms of model quality uh, as, as experimented with Roberta, Diberta, GPT-2 and GPT-3. Uh, the best part, there's no inference time latency. So in fact, at inference time, what you could do is to take these matrices, which have been uh, you know, trained, and then you can compute uh, W plus AB and keep it as it is, as a single matrix. So therefore, by definition uh, or by design, you have no inference time latency increase at all. Yeah. LoRa is available uh, as, a, you know, um, um, as a software for you to try out um, on this GitHub. Um, in fact, uh, um, uh, so LoRa actually has this hyperparameter called R, so which defi basically defines how many extra parameters need to be fine-tuned. Um, so uh, uh, with GPT-3 GPT experiments, people have observed that a very low, low rank R, R equal to one or two, suffices even when the full rank R for GPT-3 is basic full 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 dimension is 12,288, right? Even then, you know, fine-tuning with just rank of R equal to one or two is good enough. Uh, of course, you know, when R equal to the overall uh, dimension itself, then LoRa tends to fine tuning. You know, uh, training LoRa is same as fine tuning, right? But uh, as I just mentioned, you know, just having R equal to one or two, much, much smaller R compared to the overall dimension uh, also gives you similar quality, similar quality. Uh, no wonder LoRa is actually has become super popular in recent times for fine tuning several LLM models like instruction based models, including Alpaca or Vicuna. Right. It is also popular to tune stable diffusion to adapt the style of the generated images where style can be controlled with these uh, matrices A and B. So what are the overall main advantages of LoRa? Uh, well, several advantages that you see here, um, rank decomposition matrices A and B have significantly fewer parameters than the original model, um, you know, pre-trained model W, which means that trained LoRa weights are easily portable. So a very small uh, number of weights uh, at fine tune time. A pre-trained model can be shared and used to build many small LoRa modules for different tasks. If you have like 100 tasks, no need to really store 100 GPT-3 sized models. You can actually store one GPT-3 sized pre-trained model and 100 of those A and B uh, rank decomposition matrices. LoRa makes training more efficient by up to three times since we do not need to recalculate uh, or update those gradients or maintain optimized states for most of the parameters, right? Only small number of parameters in A and B need to be, uh, you know, you need to maintain gradients for them. Previously, pre-trained weights are actually kept frozen, so the model is not prone to catastrophic forgetting. So there is no, no, no worry about catastrophic forgetting at all. Uh, no extra inference latency increase, which is also great. Uh, LoRa is orthogonal to many, many other methods that I just talked about, like adapters and prefix tuning and so on, and therefore you can always combine with them so as to get even better accuracy. Yeah. Now, how can we apply LoRa to transformers? So, you know, just for the notation sake, let's consider W0 as uh, pre-trained matrix weights and delta W be the accumulated gradient update during adaptation or fine tuning as you can call the process as, right? So in general, uh, the gradient update basically means that yes, you have pre-trained weights W0 and you keep adding delta W so as to essentially get uh, revised weights, yeah. Um, so, um, and, and in general, with just the pre-trained model, the hidden layer updates or, you know, the updates from a particular weight matrix layer is going to be obtained as W0 times X. Right? Uh, but then with LoRa, the modified forward pass looks like that. You have uh, H equal to W0 X plus alpha times delta W X. This delta W is the accumulated gradient that is going to be managed by A and B, those two low rank weight matrices. Okay. Now uh, here, you know, W0 is the pre-trained weights. Uh, delta W is going to be coming from your uh, A and B in those weight matrices. So this, uh, this, this factor alpha is basically the merging ratio. So how do you merge essentially the pre-trained weights with the fine-tuned updates, right? So alpha in some ways also stands for the learning rate as you might, as you can relate with, right? 
So um, uh, for initialization, uh, Laura uh, authors actually propose initialization using uh, random Gaussian initialization for A and zero as initialization for B. So at beginning, uh, you know, in the beginning, delta W, which is calculated as B into A, is essentially zero. Yeah. Now, how is LoRa applied to transformers? Well, uh, transformers have uh, four weight matrices W K, W Q, W V, W zero. Uh, a WO in the self-attention module, and then there are two weight matrices in the MLP module. Uh, these authors essentially, uh, in the original paper, they uh, they um, suggest that you can adapt only attention weights and you can freeze the MLP modules so as to reduce the overall number of fine-tuned weights even further. Now, the great results that they have is that on GPT-3, 175 billion model, uh, you can reduce the VRAM consumption from for, during training from 1.2 TB that would be required if you would, were to do typical fine-tuning to just 350 GB uh, when you are trying to do fine tuning uh, with LoRa. Uh, with the R equal to four, rank as small as four, you know, and only updating WQ and WV, uh, the checkpoint size actually reduces 10,000 times, which basically means the checkpoint size reduces from 350 GB to 35 MB. This essentially means that if you were doing 100 different fine tuning tasks for 100 different uh, downstream applications, Originally, you would need 35 TB to store those checkpoints. However, with LoRa, you just need to store 350 GB worth of one pretend checkpoint and then 35 MB worth of 100 different fine-tuned AB low rank matrices, which basically means overall size requirements of just 354 GB compared to 35 TB. LoRa also gives you 25% speed up during training, uh, as, as the author saw on GPT-3. Uh, 175 billion parameter model compared to full fine tuning uh, since you don't need to really update the gradients for a large number of parameters. Now, here are some results from the paper. So how does LoRa, LoRa perform for Roberta, Deberta, and GPT-3? You know, they have compared with several baseline methods, several uh, optimization methods already. So for example, full fine tune, uh, and, and they have compared Roberta base, Roberta large, uh, you know, and Deberta models. And they've compared on glue tasks. So these comparisons are done on glue tasks. What you observe across these uh, across these methods so is full fine tune method. There is uh, only the bias update method, several kinds of adapters, uh, several kinds of adapter based method that you see. And everywhere you see that on average, clearly LoRa performs better compared to the baseline methods. Uh, well, uh, so that's that, and that also holds true for GPT-2 medium and GPT-2 large kind of methods. On average, you know, uh, this one is done basically on on, on another data set, and you see, uh, you know, on average, you see that the LoRa-based methods outperform uh, in terms of quality, you know, other kinds of methods, even the full fine-tuned based methods, in fact. Even on GPT-3, you observe that on average, uh, the GPT-based, uh, the, the LoRa-based GPT-3 uh, a fine tuning in that sense is gives you better results compared to other ways of actually doing fine tuning. Yeah. Now, uh, lastly, let's understand uh, LoRa uh, rank updates. Uh, you know, low rank updates done by LoRa. So, you know, for example, uh, you know, which matrices should we apply LoRa to, and what is the optimal rank R? What does LoRa actually do? What is there in those low rank matrices? Okay. So, first, let's basically look at uh, uh, this thing. I mean, how does LoRa scale? So essentially, if you increase the number of trainable parameters by changing the rank R in LoRa, you basically observe that uh, uh, LoRa does not degrade, fortunately. Uh, now, it's not very obvious, but it is, it is observed across these two different data sets, WikiSQL and multi nli match, uh, that uh, methods like prefix embed and prefix layer, you know, they start degrading as you increase the number of trainable parameters, right? But uh, LoRa does not degrade like that. That's nice, right? LoRa is more robust to scalability and task performance, okay? Now, which of weight updates, which matrices should be should be applied LoRa to in a transformer model? Well, this results on GPT-3, and if you basically fix a budget of 18 million parameters, you could basically afford to have a rank of eight if you were just updating the query matrix WQ, or or any of those matrices, the key matrix or the value matrix or the output matrix in the self-attention sublayer. Yeah. Uh, or you could actually afford to have uh, R equal to four if you were updating a pair of matrices, WQ, WK, and so on. And what is observed across data sets is that, uh, you know, just updating the query and the value matrices is reasonably good enough. Or you could also choose to update all the weight matrices, but have R equal, uh, you know, all the four weight matrices in self-attention and have R equal to two. Okay. Now, what is the most optimal rank R? So, you know, um, so what is observed is that if you essentially 
uh, uh, try to update any of these combinations of weight matrices, you observe that typically, even with R equal to one or two, you obtain very, very competitive results compared to full fine tuning. Right. This suggests that the weight matrix uh, delta W, uh, which is comprised of B into A, could have a very small intrinsic rank. In fact, uh, in the paper, the authors actually provide empirical evidence as well as argue that increasing R, the rank R used by LoRa, does not cover a more meaningful subspace, which suggests that a low rank adaptation matrix is actually sufficient rather than having a very high rank matrix. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, the number of parameters required by LoRa uh, you know, can be very small while still retaining most of the accuracy. OK, so let me summarize this video. LoRa stands for low rank adaptation. It's a method where you basically keep the pretend weights fine, uh, pre pretend weights frozen and then only fine tune a low rank adaptation matrix, uh, two low rank adaptation matrices B and A, right? And then you combine those using a merging uh, uh, factor alpha. It's an efficient adaptation strategy that neither introduces inference latency nor reduces your input sequence length, but retains high model quality. Right? It allows for quick task switching when deployed as a service by sharing vast majority of the pre-trained model parameters. Hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.